Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Fish. Let's just jump straight into your questions. Sounds like Ola England has been thinking about you. Did you see his upcoming solar single cut model? Yeah, I don't know how because the dude's like eight feet tall, but somehow I managed to not run into Ola once at Nam, And I really wanted to, apart from wanting to set something up with solar. I'm just like the rest of you. One of the first, if not actually the first high gain videos I saw on YouTube was an Ola England video. I think it was the Bugera 6262 vid. Dude's an OG and basically one of the trailblazers, one of the guys that showed people like me that this is a legitimate platform for building a career through guitar. You could say that I'm a fan and I didn't get to meet him which sucks. Anyways, obviously I wasn't watching much YouTube over the last week. I was at Nam. now I'm recovering from Nam. Nam Thrax is a real thing. Imagine thousands of hands touching the same guitars. It's, uh, it's a situation. So I actually didn't see it at the show, but I've seen it now, and, uh, I have mixed thoughts. I know, right? It's a single cut. That's supposed to be the automatic rubber stamp of approval on this channel. But um, let's talk about it. There seem to be two finishes so far. There's the matte black one that Ola's playing in an FAQ video, and a red one that was present at the NAM show. The black one seems to come with Duncan's and an Evertune, not sure about the red one. Honestly, the body shape looks a bit strange. Maybe I just need to see it in person, but the bulb looks kind of massive. Can't really tell if it has a carved top or just beveled edges, but it kind of looks like an eclipse that's been flattened in the back. I do like the little notch at the rear strap lock though. Then there's the reverse headstock. It looks huge. Now I actually think it's a good design choice because that headstock is the Solar thing, the Solar branding. But on this guitar, it kind of looks enormous. I legitimately thought it was a seven string at first because the headstock was so massive, but no, it's a six string. It's unique and immediately identifiable as a Solar, but it's kind of, and I can't believe I'm saying this, not really my thing. I don't know, maybe it's too modern and I'm too old fashioned. I still really want to try Solar and I hear the new ones are coming with stainless steel frets, but I'm not sure which ones yet. I don't know, disappointed I didn't get to try it at the show. Maybe I'd like it better in person. What about you? What do you think of the new Solar single cut? I'd love to know. Pull in the top right. You see the new single cut from Solar Guitars yet? Yep. How do you feel about Jared James Nichols' new Epiphone? I love it. So, so much. I got to hold the prototype at NAMM and yes, all of the yes, I was about to steal it from the Gibson booth. So what is it? Well, it's a new Epiphone Les Paul Custom and it's one of the most interesting ones yet. For those of you who don't know who Jared James Nichols is, he's a very, very enthusiastic blues player. He's one of those guys whose love for music is infectious. I don't really consider myself a blues guy, but when he plays it, I love the blues. He also got a signature Black Star amp this year and I gotta say, well deserved. So, this new Jared James Nichols signature that was revealed at NAMM 2019, it's based off of his old Glory Gibson Les Paul Custom. It basically feels like the Epiphone inspired by 1955 Les Paul Custom, which to this day is still one of my absolute favorite guitars I've demoed on the channel. In fact, Jared has been using his own customized 55 Epi, which probably gave him the confidence to release a signature through Epiphone. The new Sig has a mahogany body with a black satin finish, a big chunky 50s rounded mahogany neck, and an ebony fingerboard with 22 frets. But unlike the regular 55, there's only a single Seymour Duncan P90 and a wraparound bridge. There's a blues power plaque where the stop tail usually is, and the back of the headstock is white. It just looks incredibly cool. It also says that it comes with the new Epi Lake case. Not really sure what that is yet, but I guess we'll see. The one aesthetic thing that I'm not too sure about is that the inlays stop after the 15th fret. From pictures, I didn't really like the half inlays, half none, but when I was holding it, I didn't really notice. Again, I just wanted to take it with me after the show, to be honest. It's like the ultimate combo between Les Paul Jr. simplicity and Les Paul custom looks and feel. Between this and the Lizzie Hale Explorer, those are my most anticipated Epiphones of the year. I cannot wait to demo it. If I can convince Epiphone to send me one, I'm, I'm not sending it back. I'm just not. And last minute kind of insane update to this. I may or may not have had someone slide into my DMs as I was trying to slide into theirs. And it looks like if I do get one, I might not have to send it back. So that works out. But yeah, I'm super excited for what Epiphone has in store for this year. 
and Kramer too. I just got an Assault Plus. I think that's what it's called. It's uh, it's this one. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly it is. I think it's an old one they had lying around, but it could be one that they're re-releasing. Not really sure. Don't even know what Duncan's are in here, but I like it. Have you sent the Solar single cut? Yes. Thinking of checking out those Fender Telecaster Electric and Acoustic concoction? Yes, the Fender Acoustasonic. That was kind of a big talking point at this year's NAMM. Essentially, it's an electroacoustic guitar with the form factor of a Telecaster. The back and sides of the body are mahogany, then the top is made of Sitka spruce, and the entire guitar has a satin finish. It has the standard Fender 25 and a half inch scale length, and then a 22 fret ebony fingerboard with a 12 inch radius. It comes in five standard finishes at launch, black, natural, seafoam green, sonic gray, and sunburst. At NAMM, they also had an America f**k yeah version. You can play it unplugged, or there's also three different pickups that can be mixed and blended to your heart's content. They're listed as the Fishman Undersaddle Transducer, which I guess is like a piezo style thing, the Fishman Acoustasonic Enhancer, which I assume is like a normal style acoustic pickup, and then a Fender Acoustasonic Noiseless Magnetic Pickup, which is the Tele style thing near the bridge. You know what? I really like it in concept, but I'm also not sure what the big deal is. I got to see it and play around with it a bit unplugged at the show, and it's really nice. The build quality is excellent, and the neck heel contour is a great modern touch. It's clearly the nicest Tele style acoustic Fender's ever done, but it's not the first. And there are other companies that have done similar style products as well. While no doubt it would be a great gigging guitar because of all the different sounds you can get out of it, it's just priced out of reach for a lot of working musicians. So yeah, I really like it, but I wish it was made in their Mexico facility because at two grand, it's not really a realistic option for average gigging musicians. And it's pretty out of the price range that I like to focus on with the channel. But yeah, what do you think of the new Fender Acoustic Sonic? Love it, hate it, let me know in the poll. Solar single cut. I know you saw it. Oh my god. It's like you guys think I love single cuts or something Paul's guitar se get it on son. Yeah So this is one of the cooler things at least in my opinion at the PRS booth this year before the show They had announced an updated core version of the Paul's guitar complete with core pricing But at NAMM they also unveiled an se version of the Paul's guitar which shares a lot of the same features But comes in at a much more affordable price point than the 3850 they're asking for the core. So we've got a signature PRS SE beveled double cut mahogany body, a mahogany neck with a pattern wide fat neck shape, and a 22 fret rosewood fingerboard with a 10 inch radius and 25 inch scale length. So almost kind of identical to the higher end core version. However, while that one has a full flames maple top, the SE version has a flames maple veneer and comes in three finishes. There's fire red, there's amber, and there's aqua. It's also got abalone bird inlays, which makes it one of the most unique and eye-catching SEs ever. And it's also one of the best outfitted. Firstly, it has TCIS humbuckers, which are the import versions of the vintage-inspired USA pickups of the same name. These can be individually split using the two mini toggles in between the volume and control knobs. PRS calls this wiring scheme true single-coil mode, and it's supposed to make these sound like legit single-coil pickups rather than split humbuckers. Then the nut material is a blend of synthetic plastic and bronze, and lastly, the bridge is an aluminum tailpiece with brass inserts. Paul himself calls this basically a private stock bridge on an SE guitar. That's awesome. So this guitar has a lot more of the core features than we're used to seeing on the SE line. Having spoken to a couple of people at PRS, this is one that they're really, really proud of, and I would love to see if I could get one on here. I'm also loving the evolution of the SE line. Year after year, they're experimenting and adopting more features previously only found on their more expensive guitars. But what about you? Do you find the SE Paul's guitar interesting? And if I do demo one, which color. I'm thinking aqua is clearly the best finish, but you can let me know in the poll. Before we get into the last question, I want to give a shout out to Garrett Kipling and the rest of the patrons for making all this content possible in Trash CPM February. If you want to support the honest reviews and coverage, you can check out my Patreon for bonus perks or my merch store. The shirts are literally the softest ever. That support is what makes all this happen, so thank you guys. Did you see the new single cut Solar? Nope. And that'll do it for this week's episode of Ask a Fish. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video, leave your thoughts and questions down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also turn on notifications, that way YouTube lets you know when I upload a new video. 
sometimes when they feel like it. Social media, Patreon, and merch links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.